Hey, I'm Craig Rodsmith and welcome to The Throttle Stop here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Probably the reason I have an affinity for a bike like this with an NSU or any kind of car engine in it is if you're familiar with my work, I tend to do things, let's say, outside the box. I'm here at the Throttle Stop in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Got some amazing bikes in here and a few cars too. One thing that caught my eye is this Munch TTS, or it became known as the Mammoth. It's insane. You think about it, this bike, these went in production, I think 66 up until 75. And it's a 1200cc NSU car engine in it. What would possess someone to do that? I'm glad he did though, because look how this worked out. Friedel Munch started his career, I think, working for another German motorcycle company called Horex. It was reasonably successful back in the day, and they went out of business, I think, in the mid-50s at some point. He bought up a lot of their, the, the leftover parts and stuff, and um, he was quite a good engineer. And then he decided to build this, what became known as the Munch Mammoth but this is actually the TTS 1200. This is a later model one. This is from the 70s. This one has fuel injection. Um, I think the very end of production, they went from the, the, this big drum brake to a, a disc brake. But um, could you imagine riding this thing and trying to pull up all this weight with that? Could be a bit dodgy. The other thing that I thought interesting about these things, I was reading that they went to this cast rear wheel and it's got an integrated uh, twin leading shoe drum brake on the other side because the original spoke wheel bikes, there was so much torque and power, they would just tear the spokes out. Catastrophic wheel failure. Imagine that thing going down on the spokes braking, that would suck. But a lot of people seem to think these things are kind of ugly ducklings. I think maybe because of its excessiveness, it's just, I think it's, they're gorgeous. It is beautiful bikes. Can you imagine the mind of the man who founded this company, Friedel Munch? This one day he saw that NSU car engine and said, I'm going to put that into a motorcycle frame. I like that way of thinking. And that's why we ended up, and we end up with motorcycles like this. And, and it's always the, the thing, um, cars and motorcycles, it's like, it's that balance between form and function, which it becomes a fine line. A lot of people might not find this appealing aesthetically. I do, I think it's beautiful. For the most part, this is a conventional, you know, double loop motorcycle frame. But the interesting part here is the frame ends here and they've got this sculptured rear section, which becomes a subframe to connect the rear shocks and everything in there. So you think about when it was designed in the 60s, in the mid 60s, it's I think kind of ahead of its time and outside the box. What I really like about this is just, it's a pretty motor. If you just took it out of the motorcycle, it's still a good looking motor. This is obviously the drive for the single overhead cam, runs across here. This is a later model one. This has mechanical fuel injection on it, um, as opposed to the early ones were carbureted. Another thing that I really like is the final drive. It's chain drive, and especially, you know, with a motor this big, you want to look after the chain. So it's totally encased in basically an oil bar. Of course, you know, any motorcycle that has some polished aluminum on it appeals to me, um, especially like these. There's just some really nice pieces of detail on this thing. I tell you what, when you sit on this thing, it's just, you realize what a behemoth it is. It's just monstrous. It's interesting because it's an NSU car engine but then they've made it basically a unit motor with a, I'm pretty sure it's a four speed transmission. So it's a unit engine like a typical modern motorcycle engine. The benefits here, you know, you've got to think about the sort of bikes that were around in the mid sixties when this was developed. It's like, you know, you, Harley Davidson Sportsters, you know, V twins and Triumphs and BSAs, parallel twins and other things like this. And it's like, you, there wasn't a lot of four cylinder motorcycles, especially 
traverse across the frame and it's like and especially nothing this powerful for its time so you know now we think about a 1200 four cylinder not that big a deal 1966 it was a big deal i think that's why they used the nsu it was a proven existing high performance engine for for the time and just the idea of taking it and putting it in a motorcycle is i like this guy Friedel munch I like the way he thinks the other thing too, to put this in perspective, you could have bought three Norton Commandos for what one of these cost. So, I don't know, who'd want three Norton Commandos? I think I would have bought one of these if I had the means back in 66. And I was like, nobody would beat you. This would be the quickest bike on the road. When you look at some of the aesthetics of this bike and you think about the way a lot of people are building bikes, even today, it's like, this is, you know, if you come up with a lot of this design today, this is pretty contemporary, you know, with the knee dance, the cafe racer look, the tank strap down the middle, the seat hump, for want of a better word, in the back. It's very cafe racer-esque. Unfortunately, the business only lasted about 10 years, I think, and it wasn't a financial success, but thankfully, we've still got some examples like this. And I don't know why it wasn't a financial success. Maybe because they were too expensive to produce, therefore make them an expensive bike to buy. It's a shame. Could you imagine if the business lasted and he was manufacturing bikes in the 21st century with this sort of vision? Who knows what he would have put in his modern bike? Something to ponder. Well, thanks for visiting the throttle stop in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin with me. And uh, maybe we'll do some more of these videos. Until then, see ya. <laughs>